He's nine, wearing a backpack that's new and a bit too big for him. He's walking home from school, past a group of little leaguers, all wearing their uniforms, laughing at something shared, something he's not a part of. He's home, takes the keys out of his pocket and opens the side door. The house is empty as usual. There's a sticky note on the fridge from the housekeeper. Mac and cheese in blue dish, microwave for four minutes on medium. He's 11, sitting on the roof of his house, a midtown brownstone, looking down at the park across the street. A firecracker is set off. He hears a teenager laugh. He's 14, holding a backpack that's not so new these days. One of his friends is stuffing it full of jewelry as a siren is going off above their head. Their getaway bikes are outside, but one of them raises up off the ground. It is compressed into a twisted metal ball. Blood leaguers coming to ruin the party. He's 16, his backpack full of protein bars and hand sanitizer. His eyes scan the horizon of the exhausted earth in front of him. His bridges are all burned in the city, but you can do whatever you want in Connecticut. The four of you are standing and looking at Otis, sitting in that kind of makeshift throne of, of his on the roof of this strip mall. Um, you're in the middle of this parking lot. There are teenagers all around you, kind of casually sitting, leaning against unpowered lampposts, um, the, the rusted out hulks of cars. I would like to increase my nonchalantness to 90%. 90% is noted. You are uh, matching the cool of the teenagers that are looking at you with um, with uh, deliberate reserve. Um, you make eye contact with one of them and they kind of nod at you. Otis has made an offer. Otis will give you what you need, specifically the herbs necessary to conduct a healing ritual that will save the mayor of Coventry for two suits of your armor. All right, I take mine off. So do I. Slops? Yeah? Dar uh, Darcy? We'll be fine. There I hate this thing, it's way too tight. We, do. we haven't even negotiated yet. Yeah, don't you know someone's life is at stake? You're supposed to heckle in these situations. Am I? I don't know. I, 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 look, I look to a, a, a nearby teenager. I don't know. It's whatever. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> so why, why are you acting weird, slobs? I'm just, I'm just... He's acting cool. He's acting uh, it's so gross. Mr. Otis? Yeah. Um, You're absolutely right that these suits are uh, pretty valuable. But you know what's invaluable is the skills of a little eager, and you happen to have four right in front of you. Maybe there's something you need accomplished, something you need done that you don't have the skills for here that we could take care of for you. Hmm. Fair point. Let me think on it for a moment. 2d6 plus charm. <laughs> <laughs> yep, of course minus two is six you should you should have taken off your suit <laughs> <laughs> okay um <sighs> i had a feeling this might come up <laughs> <laughs> Uh, on a full, okay. uh, you know what? I'm going to tell you what a full success and a partial would have looked like. Wow, wait, wait, just tease us. <laughs> a full success is Otis was going to ask you to repair the town's power station. Oh, we would have been so good at that. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah. A partial is he wants you to steal a horse from a nearby, inexplicably still running horse farm. Huh, fun. No, that would have been fun. But Wrong. instead, horse he. Keeper. Instead, he says this. Now, the only reason I'm not doing this is because 
this is my home and I don't want to leave it. Mm -hmm. The other lakesiders would be devastated if I left them in this exhausted earth and they all kind of nod. Where'd you get a cigar? (laughs) Would you like one? Uh, No, No. I don't smoke. Mm. I I, I, I turned to another teenager. Smoking's not cool. Roll 2d6 plus cool. Oh, no. No. Oh, oh, no, I got this. I got this. I got this. I got this. Plus cool. Oh, God. Uh, Thank God for seven. (laughs) Roll the four. The two teenagers, like you you said that to one teenager and the two of them were about to light up a cigarette. One still does, but the one you made eye contact with pretends to and then kind of looks around and then like quietly pockets the cigarette. I give give them a knowing knowing nod. (laughs) annoying <laughs> <laughs> nod I, I, I thought you said an annoying nod yeah. <laughs> like, what does that look like <laughs> <laughs> because I'm feeling benevolent I will give you two options mm-hmm. option one two suits of your armor and you are on your way in minutes with the herbs you need Option two, in the great library of Mystic Connecticut, there is a copy of something, a copy of a book that I want very desperately. It is called The Oracles of Astrum Psychus. Now you spell that? Uh, He he spells it for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm sorry, where was that middle letter again? uh, P. Okay. No, the other middle letter. Ah, M. Ah, thank you. Wait, what was what was the first one? Of the first word O, the second word O, the third one A. Okay, I'm lost, Mindy. <laughs> I I, oh, I have it. I've got it. <laughs> thank you. Um, uh, yes, Otis, we would be um delighted to retrieve the oracles of Astrum Psychus for you. Um, however. Um, n- not however, ad- and ad- additionally, we are on a very tight schedule because we have a very good friend who is dying. So I'm wondering if maybe we could have the herbs first and on our way back, swing by the library to bring you the oracles. Hmm. Blood leaguers, right? Yes. Yeah. That's right. We're the good guys. Yeah. Well, because you're the good guys, perhaps you haven't ever heard the word leverage. If you take the herbs and leave, there is nothing that I can do to exert leverage necessary for you to bring me this book. What if we leave two of the suits, but when we bring you the herbs, you give them back? Or when we bring you the book? We leave the suits, you give us the herbs. We save our friend. We get the book, we bring it back, you give us our suits back. Darby, 2d6 plus sharp, please. Mm. Nine. That's pretty sharp. I can throw in this Polaroid. The second that you start talking, you're kind of, you know, you are a a, a student of the human condition and also by extension, a student of the groundhog condition. (laughs) And you're just kind of reading it. And the one thing that's kind of been gnawing at you over the course of this conversation is really from the moment you kind of the moment you you saw that guard at the outskirts of town and said uh hey we're coming from coventry they're in a bad way over there something about that has just been weighing on you like what what does that mean like now that they know that what does that mean Mm -hmm. and you're looking around at all these teenagers and they're all armed and you think they're all out and about and you see like people on the roof of the strip mall kind of milling around and moving things and loading things. 
The sense that you get is that the second you leave, if you're leaving and not going back to Coventry, they're going to attack Coventry. Hmm. Oh. At at best, Otis is simply considering it. Right. So if you leave with your suits of armor here, they're probably heading off. So you don't know what to do about that. Could you give us a moment? <gasps> huddle up. To have a huddle. Mm-hmm. Excuse of us. Excuse, Excuse me. me, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Little leaders. Some yeah. ours. Hey, what's up? Hey. Hey. I am concerned that oh. the Lake Siders might attack Coventry. Yeah, they're not in a good spot right now. No. Why, Why would, would they, they attack? attack Coventry? What do they have to gain? I don't know, but I think this place makes people desperate, makes them willing to fight instead of bond together. I don't I don't know the reason. Mm -hmm. But when we leave, especially if we leave Coventry without any protection, we're just leaving them high and dry, you know? Mm. What 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 if we split up? Maybe if, maybe get get them the heck out of Coventry. It sounds like they can't defend it anyway. And those Evacuate. weird robots. Yeah. Maybe we need the help of another another group from the traveling team. We could ask what progress others are making. Maybe while we go to the library, they could help evacuate Coventry. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good plan. So we don't have what to leave them alone. Yeah. Because we're heading straight there first. Could you reach them psychically, Mathers? Oh. We have a radio. Oh, okay. Yeah, we have a radio. <laughs> yeah. Have you not pressed the button on the side of your helmet? Oh, that's what this does. I thought yeah. it was just making fun noises. <laughs> <laughs> who, who, who have you been bothering? <laughs> I don't know. Uh -oh. Um, give me, give me two d ten, Morgan. Three d ten. Uh oh. Two. Ah, two d six. The surf. What's happening there? No, 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 no. Two d six. Ah, I'm not ready for this. Uh, no. Seven. Seven. You have been bothering inbound. <laughs> 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 that makes sense because inbound wouldn't say anything. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> and pretty much the second you're like, oh, wait, it does something. Inbound heard that, and you just hear inbound say, ah, Morgan, <laughs> you have been sending me direct communications for about a day and a half. <laughs> oh, inbound, I'm so. Oh, wait, sorry. Oh, inbound, <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Over. No need to apologize. I was able to filter out the pertinent information. Morgan, ask Inbound where they are and if they've made progress. Inbound, where are you and have you made progress? Over. Based on the coordinates, we are south of your location and we have made precious little progress insofar as uh, pinpointing the earthquake or at least the epicenter. We know that it is north of us, meaning it is probably north of you. Hmm. Um, we are thinking of moving north ourselves. Hmm. I'm assuming you mean over. Um, could you get... <laughs> <laughs> um, can you get to... Can you get to Coventry? I, I think they're about to be attacked very soon, and they're in bad shape over. Move to Coventry and secure. Is this your base of operations? Over. Uh, hold on. Is this our base of operations? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah sure. Over. 
Understood. Wait, shouldn't you? We have acquired transportation. ETA on Coventry is three hours. Well, Morgan, Morgan, um, Morgan, Morgan. Is, they... Yeah. Well, oh, wait, hold on. What? <laughs> um, shouldn't you tell them like we're uh, if you want them to evacuate? Not yet. Oh, we're just sending back. We have to. Yeah, we have to oh, treat the mayor. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And she doesn't okay. want anyone to know. Mm. Yeah. Um. Mm-hmm. And then we're, we're going to be there book. in three hours, which is, I, I think it took us a little I'd, more time than that to come from here, to come, to get to mm-hmm. here. So, Oh, now, but now we have a car. Oh, that's true. The, yeah, uh, I think we should the meet them around the same time. Okay. 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 Is oh, everyone on their, t- on the, on Inbounds team doing good? Everybody's good? Yeah. Everyone's who's on, okay yes, on Inbounds team? team? Hey, Inbound. Over. Yes, Morgan. Over. Is uh, Susie doing all right? <laughs> Susie's doing just fine. She's made friends with the locals. Over. Thanks, Inbound. Susie's doing great. She's made friends with the locals, Mathers. Well, that makes sense. They're, they're, they're they both have a, a charming brutality to them. <laughs> Let's talk to the groundhog. Hmm. Okay, sir, we've decided we will take the herbs now and go get your book. And you have our word that we will return. Leave two suits of armor as collateral. If you don't return, they are mine. All right. If you hey, do, man. I will give them back. I I toss my, my clothing. It's stinky. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I put mine... I drape it across the mayor. It, it's I somehow mean, the, the the boss, the, the boss, the groundhog. Yeah, Mister Otis, do we have your word that we will receive the suits upon our return with your book? Absolutely. Okay, I uh, will just let our very dear friend Ned the Dead know about this deal. Who? <laughs> hey. Who? Mindy making things up again? Yeah, what's Ned to Dead? It, 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 Mindy it, it, 2d6 plus sharp. Is that like Drop Dead Fred? Or some, like a sequel? Uh, 10. You you threw a knife that hit him in the heart. Um, <laughs> he does not know how you know that. Like you're just reading his mind and... You don't even need to read his mind. You're reading I don't know his who Ned the Dead is, but he you? seems afraid. <laughs> yeah, like you just thought of his deepest fear and and just kind of said it right back to him. You have my word. You'll get these suits back. Great. What? Then uh, I'm sure Ned will have no reason to visit. We'll be That's back. Right. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, uh, before we go, I saw like a radio tower. Can I uh, can I make a call real quick? He gestures with his groundhog hand. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I would like to call my mother. Sure, you call your mom. Mm-hmm. It goes to. Um, it goes for a few rings, and then your mom has an old school answering machine. So you hear it, uh, you know, hi, you've reached the Slobbins residence. Um, please leave a message at the beep, and we will get back to you. Boop. Ah, uh, hey, hey, mom, it's uh, it's it's <laughs> it's me. Uh, it's she picks me. up. Uh, my, uh, oh, they're getting through this. I was not ready for her message. Hey, mom. <laughs> I didn't recognize the number. Is this, are you in Connecticut? I am in Connecticut. You, how did you, oh yeah, we, we do have caller ID. We do. I figured it was a spam call. A lot of solicitors have been calling lately. Yeah, especially from Connecticut. I feel like it's like, it's like lawless here, mom. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just calling. I forgot to say I was, I'm, I'm, we're on a traveling team. We're in Connecticut. Um, so we're probably going to be fine. Uh, I should probably put clothes on. Um, uh, don't worry about that. Uh, didn't you say like you had like was it was it was it your mom or like your aunt who like 
didn't <clears throat> she work at like the 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 library in Connecticut? It would be my aunt, so your great aunt. Okay. My father's sister. Yes. Yeah. We didn't go get a book there. Do you know anything about books and libraries? <laughs> I am aware of both books and libraries. Oh, that's good. That's good. Um, uh, Mindy, 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 can, can you come here? Yeah. I cannot pronounce the name of this thing. Um, can you, uh, uh, Mom, I'm, I'm going to put Mindy on the line. Um, hello, Mrs. Lovins. Hello, Mindy. Um, we're heading to a library. Uh, we're looking for a book called The Oracles of Astrum Psychus. And... Um, that's really all we know. <laughs> Do you know anything else? Yeah. About what am also, I supposed to be asking? I don't know. Uh, also, uh, 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 Darby, 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 Darby and Morgan here. Dar Darby and Morgan say hi to mom. Oh. Hi, mom. Hello, Mrs. Lobbins. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Morgan. It's with the beef, Morgan. Have you heard yeah. of that book before? I personally have not, but my aunt probably would. Uh, she does work in the library, though she didn't talk about her work in her last Christmas letter to everybody. So I don't know if she still works there, but she probably does. She's worked there forever. Is she still living in Connecticut, Miss Levins? In Mystic, yes. I knew it. See, sometimes oh. this thing works. M Mystic's okay. Oh, it is? What? I haven't visited there in a while. It has been, it was before you were born, Slobs, but mm -hmm. yes, it's just kind of below that, what do they call it? The, the demarcation line. Thank uh -huh. you, Ms. Lobbins. We have to go. Oh, Appreciate oh. your help. All right. Sorry, okay, Slobbs, do you have anything else that you wanted to? I was going to tell my mom I love her. Okay. I, Is that okay, I Mindy? the phone. <laughs> wow, Mathers. Yeah. Oh. Also. Well, well, th well, thank you, honey. Well, I haven't uh, said it yet. I, I haven't said it yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I love you, Mom. All right. I love you as well. All right. Bye. Mm hmm. Morgan, why do you still have a beef with my mom? I'm not getting into it right now, Slobs. Mm -hmm. How also are things with your mom, Slobs? <laughs> have you been. Have you had time to spend a little more time together? Yeah, we've been trying. Like, I feel like oh, it's something nice. I've been trying to do. So it's been a little bit better. Good. Yeah. Good. You, you know, like, w w like when you try, you just try. And yeah. uh, as I've been trying and um, you like, it's like, like, like when you think about someone, and you're like, oh, yeah, I, I think about this person. And you like instead of just like instead of like, oh, that's a nice thing. I should call them. I've been trying to do more like, oh, if I think about it, do it because I always forget. That's really nice. And then when I heard about Mystic, I was like, oh, wait, this is something in my, in my, in my head about it. And then I went to, and I called. That's a great idea. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. it's about, you know, meeting people where they're at. What? I don't know. Um, should we go get in the car? Oh, yes, please. Herbs, please. Oh, yeah. Herb. I almost forgot. <laughs> Which teen um. has the herbs? <laughs> A um, a rather tired-looking team um, walks up to you, uh, smoking a cigarette, almost down, like the ash is like hanging. Um, well, kind of looks you all up and down, uh, takes a kind of real old backpack off his shoulder, leans down, uh, unzips it, says, "What do you need?" And Morgan, you kind of lay out what you think the ritual needs. And he kind of sifts through the like bottles of empty hand sanitizer and stuff and like pulls out these pouches and kind of hands them to you. Thank you, sir. Mm. Thanks, sir, man. Yeah, this will do. And um, yeah, with that, You um you head back to uh you head back to uh Coventry or Oventry, depending on what you want to call it. And um and yeah, you uh <laughs> you're, you're in the car. Um the thun the Thunderbird. 
the Thunderbird. And it's, you know, hiking, hiking, you know, for hours overland is a lot faster now that you're in a car. Not like 10 times faster because you're driving on roads. It's interesting. You're driving on roads that are unmaintained, but haven't been broken up by weeds because nothing is growing. So the roads are really more powdery and crumbling than cracking apart. Mm -hmm. Um, But still, it takes you dramatically less time. And so, Morgan, you begin uh, preparing the ritual. Um, You already any less bumpier? Nope. I can go faster. No. Oh, go yeah, go faster. I can fly you instead, Morgan. Oh yeah, can that happen? <laughs> I don't know if I can go as fast as this car, but oh yeah, maybe not. Never mind. I'll just try and, and do it shaky. Yes, yeah, so you're you're kind of grinding stuff up and casting these kind of little cantrips of like purification on various things. It's it's a ritual that involves a bunch of kind of smaller preparatory rituals. Mm. Because you kind of just want to get out of the car, get everyone in a circle, kind of get the chanting going, start the fire, and have the healing. Um, you already rolled for it, technically. Uh, and because you got a partial success, you had to go through this whole thing first. Mm-hmm. So the fact of the matter is, once you get back, you're standing in Coventry Center. And um, uh, you're standing in Coventry Center and... The um, the the mayor, Katie Queen, uh, insists on getting up and walking to the statue of Nathan Hale to greet you. And, um, you know, Morgan, you kind of tell her that it works better if she lays down and she would prefer to stand. And so she just kind of stands leaning on a borrowed rifle and you kind of draw a ritual circle around her, kind of get everyone into position and kind of start the process. Is there anybody magical on inbounds team? Uh, yeah. In on inbounds team is, um, uh, Susie Chen warp doodle, um, and Rodrigo laser beam, um, warp doodle is, well, you don't know if what warp doodle does is technically magic, it's certainly arcane. Warp Doodle can kind of summon crystalline structures. Okay. I mean, everyone around here can kind of cast spells. Like, you all could, like, you, you don't do it that much, and it feels kind of weird and tingly when you do, but, like, slobs, you could conceivably, like, you know, fire, like, a short-range, like, blast of magical energy. It's just you'd rather throw a grenade, which you're incredibly good at. <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, I think the last time I did a, any kind of magical circle, I went back in time. <laughs> yeah, there's that. Yeah. There's that yeah. too. So you know, little little gun shy. Well, we can um, all join the ritual circle, right? You, I'm sure you it's can. only this helpful. Is very <sighs> much in very much in Morgan's wheelhouse. So I heard there was a need for fire. Morgan? There is a need for fire. Yeah, a little bit, uh, and very specifically focused, which your sword is very good at. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do, do I need to put on clothes? I didn't put on my other armor yet. Yes. We uh, need to put on clothes. I did you say you brought screen. the other armor with you? Oh, yes. Oh, that was, yeah. yeah gotcha. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Put on, ah, you put this on the is much stuff. better. Mm. Mm. Um, mm. Yeah, and you start. The, the, the ritual itself is one of, um, it's, you know, it's mostly chanting the exact things that Morgan is telling you to chant. And it, it, it's rather hypnotic because it's the same things kind of over and over again. Morgan, it takes an awfully long time because normally when you're engaging in any kind of ritual or even just combat magic, the air feels kind of like thick with potential. Like you're more or less kind of grabbing it. I mean, it's technically like etheric energy, but it really just feels like potential in the air. Like you're about to tune into a radio station and know that there's something there. Here, it just sounds like the radio stations are all very, very quiet and staticky. There's still magic in the air and magic in the ground, sort of, but it's very, very muted. So all this is taking a while. Um, kind of the the part of the ritual where you're going to kind of harness the healing energy, um, the the four of you in the circle all need to to kind of like trigger the flow of energy 
essentially talk about a moment where you felt like you were healing or you felt like you were in a place where you were hurt and then you got better. So it's kind of like vocalizing a memory. I remember when my wing was torn off and everyone said really nice things to me. And even though I was in a lot of pain and was really woozy and couldn't think, I felt like loved and like I knew I would heal because of my friends. Um, I remember a time where I um, accidentally let sort of a thousand people into my brain at once from a little cursed jar. And um, it was a horrifying pain from within like I have never felt. But then Darby woke me up with ice cream, which I thought was very thoughtful. <laughs> and uh, I think friendship is um, important. Hmm. <clears throat> I, remember, I remember the time I first broke my leg. Um, it was when my uh, my nanny was like, you can't climb to the roof. And then I was like, oh, it's a challenge. And I climbed to the roof. I was three. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, and I had to be in a cast. Yeah, you know, I was in a cast for a while, and then it went inside my cast. Um, that was really cool, and it was like I had a pattern on it. It was like all, all covered in like different kinds of like flowers. It was really cool. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that day I could take some punishment. <laughs> <laughs> the origin story. <laughs> yeah, I realized from that moment I was like, oh. All right, it's only bad for a little bit, and then it gets better. <laughs> oh, do I need to provide one as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, I remember uh, whenever I thought that I was going to uh, move to California and lose every everything that was stable in my life, and then Mathers. Um, reminded me of my worth and I I'll never forget that Mathers and with that you kind of feel Morgan the surge of energy in the ritual circle what does the act of Katie Queen healing look like hmm. um the uh there is the um etheric energy uh, sort of gathers around her like um like petals around a bloom and sort of slowly starts lifting her up in the air whoa whoa yeah and she's a few in kind of a few inches off the ground her back is like ramrod straight her eyes are open um you imagine and morgan you can you can kind of get a sense of it because you're leading the ritual and mindy you can because it's her, her her mental state is very apparent. She is in an impossible amount of pain that she is not trying to let on. Um, but it's the pain of healing. It's the pain of knitting bones. It's the pain. Essentially, if you've ever like broken something, the pain of healing over the next month or two months or however long it takes for your body to knit, she's feeling it all right now over the course of about 10 seconds. Oof. And she's just there point. kind of making eye contact, not letting on. Um, and with the energy it, it kind of fading, her feet touch the ground. And she hand, she leans the rifle against the Nathan Hale statue. <sighs> Could I see the four of you in my home? Let's go. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, I like she. I like your new scar. It looks like a flower. <laughs> you get plenty of them down here. Mm -hmm. Oh, do you want to see mine? Uh, <laughs> not bad. 
Um, so she takes you back to her living room again in one of kind of the nearby buildings. Well, thank you, obviously. Of course. I, I kind of, I'm glad that you're better. There's very little I could give you that all of you um, don't already have. But as I've been laying there for the last half day, I've done my best to catalog my memories now that you young lady have restored them to me. And I'd like to share a little bit, at least what I can. It's still very new. It was during the war and I was very young. Connecticut was green. There were towns, there were people, there was laughter, there were carnivals. I remember these things now. And I feel like as the time is passing, the memories are starting to come back together again into a quilt instead of just a pile of fabric. My mother was a knitter. She takes a, um, it's not even a book. It's really like a collection of loose papers. And she kind of takes it out and like leans on this like old kind of weathered um, armoire and like writes down something. And you actually see Mindy. Mother name dash question mark was a knitter. And then she kind of folds it back up, puts it kind of into her like, collection of pockets. It was near the end of the war and we knew that we were going to win, but we also knew that the other side across the ocean was desperate. We had prepared, had drills in case something happened to get into the magic shelters and Oh, I remember that so well. There was one in every school. And then one day all the sirens went off and we all went to the shelters and we were scared. And I knew that my teacher was scared, but we were all in the shelters and it was very cramped, but it wasn't dark. It was very light. The lights were on very bright. And when we were down there, we couldn't hear the sirens anymore, but we were told to wait a day. And we all slept down there. I remember sleeping. And then after a day, we emerged and we walked back out and everything looked normal. But... As that first day passed, we started asking questions like, why were we in that shelter? And why did we go down there? And did anyone hear a siren and we couldn't remember? And then the grass started dying and the trees looked like autumn, even though it was the late spring and all the leaves fell off. And I remember in the first couple of days, my mother reading the newspaper and saying things like, this can't be right. And why is this? And that's not true. And I've never been there. Some people started leaving. I remember I was in a class of 21, lucky 21, my teacher said, but then there were only eight of us. And I don't remember where they went. The last thing that I remember was someone saying that the people in Hartford did their best, but I didn't know what that meant because I'd never been to Hartford. After that, it was just now 
And it felt that way forever. And no one talked about the past because no one saw the point in it. And we just had to worry about getting food and getting water and making the drives on the empty highways to where things still grew. But we always came back home and we did not know why. That's what I've been able to put together today. And it wasn't always like this. I think it did happen. I think it happened all at once. That's awful. Until yesterday, I didn't know any better. Can I give you a hug? Okay. Yeah, hug. Hug. Yeah. Um, you will give Katie Queen a group hug. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Does, does that hurt? i never been impaled. Well, I have been impaled. Um, me too. And she holds up her forearm. Um, oh, that one looks good. Rebar. But Oh, classic. It always gets you. But <laughs> mm -hmm. bad jacket, like you gotta leave it in and get let professional take it mm -hmm. off. Um but you, know, you being you being shot like is it, is it hurt? I poke. After the day she's had, it doesn't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> um she now that she's kind of 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 a, a state where she's not actively dying. Where's your armor? Oh, my armor? I, I'm wearing it. No, the armor you came in with. Oh, I left it with um. Oh, what's his name? Um, Otis. Otis. Oh yeah, Otis. This um, this like mole thing. It's a ground. You traded your armor to Otis temporarily. Temporarily. We left it as collateral. Yeah, we have to go get a book. Oh, I I couldn't have forgiven myself if you gave up your armor for me. We. Zlobs and I have our own armor. We don't, we're fine without it. But also, you should know that we're not, well, I don't know. Mindy said some things that I didn't understand that maybe mean this isn't an issue anymore. But when we left, it felt like maybe the Lakesiders might come here and mm. attack. So we have other little leaguers on their way. We didn't tell them exactly what was going on with you because you're the mayor, you should make the decision about fighting or evacuating, but they will they will also be here to help whatever you think is best if the Lakesiders do come. And yeah, and everyone in town is going to listen to you, so I think the only chance for them to leave this place and maybe start somewhere that's not Connecticut. I just need some fresh air. I run outside. Yeah, you do. Um, and yeah, Mindy, you're you're out there. The three of you, um, Morgan, Darby, Slobs, are talking to um, Katie Queen for kind of a couple of minutes, and you know she's she's kind of thoughtfully taking in everything you're saying about fresh starts and relocating. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like give a tactical assessment, saying he's no way mm -hmm. old. It's like you know just putting him my my my. I am sure you know the play better than I do. Just you know the just the way that the assault would have happened. It's just that numbers don't don't look good. And yeah, you're doing, and she's she's taking it all in. Um, yeah, Mindy, you're you're outside and processing i just I sit down on the ground you can do. i go out and say uh to try to come i'm gonna go out and try and comfort mathers sure mathers yeah uh sit you mind if i sit next to you i'm i'm okay morgan i just i just need to just to think for a second i'm just trying to sort sort my brain i'll i'll be okay i'll be in in one second <laughs> Okay, you've looked really stressed for a while, so I just wanted to, to check in. If you're okay, I'm going to trust you. I'm okay. Thank you. Thank you for checking in. I'm going to toss Mathers a fruit roll up and head back inside. And and, and, that's, and that's how I lost my shoes. 
Oh, well, that yeah. makes sense. Well, you got to mm-hmm. get them back. Yeah. I Unless you got the new shoes. Well, I, I have the new shoes. We got the new shoes. That's smart. The new shoes. Yeah. Um, there's um, the sound of kind of movement above you, like s- upstairs or on the roof or something like that. And one of the other uh, Coventry members kind of pops uh, pops her head in. It's a uh, um, um, woman that's somewhere between 70 and 90 years old um with a big spyglass like a like a nautical spyglass kind of hanging around her neck oh, we've got four in armor coming from the south uh and katie queen looks at all of you i'll be out they're friends um and yeah, with that, um, uh, you know, coming coming over the horizon on, um, in what looks like seventy percent of a flatbed truck <laughs> is um, uh, inbounds at the wheel, so to speak. But there is no wheel inbound. Has essentially mashed various metal tendrils from uh, from his arms into the steering column and is driving the the truck with uh Susie Chen, Warp Doodle and Rodrigo Laserbeam in the back. Um and yeah, Susie Susie kind of hops off, walks in, like Warp Warp Doodle is um you know kind of looks around and starts kind of generating these like kind of big flat like crystalline structures around uh, their hands. Uh, Rodrigo Laserbeam um, kind of runs, like fires off a grappling hook and like leaps up onto a roof where he's met by another sniper and they talk for a second and then they both start laughing and now all of a sudden they're looking around. <laughs> um, Susie Chen looks at you, Mindy. You're still on the ground. You okay? Yeah. Um, I just got a little overwhelmed, so I she already walks went. off. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, inbound, um, and Katie Queen start talking, and the idea of the idea of retreat is immediately off the table and so inbound is essentially like well I've been told this is the base of operations and Katie Queen says well, for my friends here it sure is and then inbound makes a series of uh, recommendations based on Slob's your tactical assessment and um yeah the uh uh warp doodle is um beginning to build crystalline walls mm. um no help so after like you all start kind of getting ready to getting ready to leave and you know sure enough about an hour after uh the reinforcements get there uh Rodrigo Laserbeam uh calls down from the roof of one of the buildings that there was someone to the east doing some scouting um oh let's get him Slobs, we have to go to the library I, well we can hey, they're on the way they're on, they're on on the way they're they're not. I want to get them. I want to get them. I want to get them. I'll fly you over there real quick. All right, thank you. <laughs> ah! <laughs> With yeah, a... so the two yeah. of you, um, the the two of you take off and um, and start flying. And yeah, I mean, it's you you see the scout. The scout sees you. It was one of the teens. Uh, one of the teen lake siders. Oh, they definitely uh, see us because I draw my flaming sword. Yeah, <laughs> just. <laughs> For effect. Yeah. Yeah. So you're you're kind of flying and you know, immediately behind you, like s- kind of silhouetted on the rooftops, you know, Rodrigo laser beam, Susie Chen, both carrying long arms and half a dozen snipers, and uh standing on the standing on the barricades is Katie Queen, who casually waves at the scout. And with that kind of you bank flaming sword, like do a couple of arcs, fly back. Slobs, you could definitely drop a grenade on this poor person from here. 
Oh, um, fantastic! I wasn't going, but now I have to. <laughs> Great! It's it's a it's a sticky one. It's it's a sticky, just a a mess of mess of pink goo. Yeah. So <laughs> you kind of drop one. You don't even need to roll for it. It hits him. Uh, and yeah, he's covered in essentially just like this viscous bubble gummy situation. <laughs> he kind of looks. He looks at his crossbow. He tries to click it a couple of times. It's screwed up. And uh, so he begins his long trudge back to <laughs> the other lakesiders. Without shoes. I, I imagine like he's walking. He's like, the shoes come off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to to there, report like, the yeah. news that um, that Coventry is as strong as ever. And so you get in the car and head to Mystic, Connecticut. I high five Mindy. Um, bye bye. When I get in the back seat, can I mental message Morgan? Mm-hmm. Morgan? Uh, I'm not okay. In my head. I'm sorry, Mathers. Is there anything you want to share? I'm just... I don't know what I'm feeling. When when Katie Queen talked about the people in Hartford and how they did their best, that was my Nana. That was Nana there with a team of people. And they did really do their best. But I just keep thinking how if Nana has known that this is how these people are living with their memories were taken from them, like they're all living in their own mental prisons and she wasn't able to save them. How, how do you, how do you, how do you have that in your brain all those years just lingering around that you failed all these people, a whole state of people. And I can't stop worrying that something is going to come that I am going to fail at. And I don't know how many people are going to be affected by it. And it's stuff has just been really tough at home with all this. There's so many secrets that I know and so many things that Nana has been telling me. And I'm just feeling so overwhelmed at, with it. And I feel like I'm distracted all the time. And I'm trying to keep up with school. And I'm trying to do Little League. And I, things are weird between me and Susie I because grabbed. I haven't. <sighs> Mathers. Yeah. You are good and you are enough. And as long as you try and as long as you care, then you'll always you'll always go in the right direction. And if you fail, then your influence will arc the world into the right direction and carry that forward. You're loved and you're enough. Just like Nana. Thank you, Morgan. Mm -hmm. hey, and Darby. also, oh. and also Susie kind of sucks sometimes. <laughs> She doesn't suck. I, she's probably feeling her own feelings about it. After I did a rain check, I never called her back. I've, there's just been so much happening. It's okay. I'm. Thank you for saying all those nice things. I think I didn't realize how long I'd been pushing all of that down. I'm glad you told me. <sighs> hey, Darby. Yes, Labs. Morgan and Mindy have been looking at each other a lot for the past like 10 minutes yeah i know i've been watching them in the rearview mirror yeah i saw like tears i saw some anger some flushing yeah do you do you want to do you want to like get mad at each other and then cry yeah sure okay i'm gonna i'm gonna look at you okay and matter <laughs> I, 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 I go off the road oh. a little bit oh, oh, oh. <laughs> no, sorry Stop. sorry Stop. what Stay sorry on the road. Right, Tara, we're being emotional up here being emotional up here you feel left out yeah but I'm glad whatever is happening. I don't want to disturb you. Never mind. Yeah, sorry. Morgan was just reminding me that I have a great team of friends here. 
Hey, hey, Mindy, we don't have um, the radio doesn't work here. Can you do that thing where you put music in our brains? Mm -hmm. Okay, louder. Morgan, okay. stop. <laughs> More inbound. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I don't, I don't have my radio with me anymore. Oh. Me either. I'll keep you both looped in. I mean, you usually do. <sighs> Zlob's two d six plus cool. Uh, I thought you would never ask. Uh, nine. <laughs> the goal is that the car can't break down. Uh -oh. Um. Uh oh. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Because where are you going to go to fix it? Um, you have to stop at one point to siphon more leaded gasoline out of cars in an abandoned, what looks to be a very well-picked-over supermarket. Mm -hmm. um, but you drive. This is, you estimate if you were to do this kind of overland, like hiking or fly, like, I mean, hiking, I mean, Darby, Darby travels fairly fast, but mm -hmm. this would be days. Yeah. The, the, the mission would have failed, mm -hmm. but you keep the car going and over the course of you kind of drive through the night and in early morning, you, um, you get through, this used to be what looked like a fairly large city that appears to have been deliberately torn down. Um, and there's now like you drive and there was this big, kind of this big arch sign over, over this, this highway off ramp that said it said Norwich, but now it's been spray painted over and just says arena. And you kind of drive past it in the distance. You hear the sound of, Either a car backfiring or light ordinance. You're not sure. Um, I'm not sure. It's light ordinance. Okay. I know light ordinance. Um, <laughs> and then, like, after you kind of drive by arena, whatever that is, you're, like, kind of based on the maps and stuff, you're about, you know, maybe seven, eight miles from the coast of Connecticut and you're driving and the road stops. And then there's just like a field of dirt. Um, and then beyond that field of dirt, it's only maybe 50, 60 feet. There's kind of a low fence. And then the road picks up again and all you see are trees. Oh, There's the line. Yep. Huh. Slaps, can you drive through it? Of course I can. I go, th I go through it. Yeah, you drive, um, you drive through, um, you drive through like, you know, this, this zone and all of a sudden, yeah, you're back on kind of well-maintained small road. Um, you go maybe, I don't know, a couple hundred feet through woods, kind of sparse woods, and then come to what looks almost like one of those little ranger stations, like if you were going into a state park. And there was no, there's no stop sign. Well, actually, there's no gate, but there is a stop sign. And you stop and... Mm -hmm. you it's know, cool there's... to follow the rules of the road. I look at Darby. <laughs> 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 and... Um, <laughs> And in inside is uh, is a you know woman wearing a wearing a military uniform, um, uh, Connecticut Coastal National Guard. Hmm. Mm. In town to trade. S sort of. Uh, We're here to see the library. Mm -hmm. Uh, official Little League business. Oh, well, you must have gotten lost. Um, she goes back into the kiosk and looks. No, Mindy, show your library card. Um, excuse me. Yes. Um, 
Boston Public Library System Platinum member. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that that has status. Well, that's a bigger field trip than I thought. We really <laughs> need to see the library. Of of course. Well, you're you're I th- you're probably here early. Um. Yeah. Okay. Um. I think your friends from New York are already there. I'm sorry. Have fun in Mystic. And she waves you on. Our friends from New York. Or who? New York. Oh. New York Blitter League. Oh, the New York Territory. Mystic. Oh, no. We went too far south. Episode 100. Oh, no. (laughs) The town of Mystic is beyond the exhausted earth, as you see. But it does seem overbuilt for the population. It's as if every third building or house was demolished. So now, now there's this tremendous number of parks and open lots and stuff. It almost just looks like a town. Like it's it's uh, looking at a lawn where every third blade of grass has been pulled. It just looks sparse, nice, hmm. green, but sparse. The library is sitting on the banks of the Mystic River. And it looks completely 100% out of place in this thin but idyllic Connecticut coastal town. It looks like it's simultaneously from the far future and the distant, distant past. Mm -hmm. And you're thinking about how exactly are you going to get a book out of here permanently? And you're kind of pondering and looking without getting too close. And it's at around now that a great big bus full of the Yonkers Wi-Fi arrive. There's a secure room underground in Chicago. (gasps) <gasps> oh, I remember this. A key in a leather-gloved hand opens the deadbolt. And then an aged hand is pulled from the glove and placed upon a sensor. <gasps> the Our door sensors. opens. She looks inside. (laughs) There should be something in this room, but there's not. Mm -mm. She turns off the light and she leaves. Ah. We'll call it right there. Ah! (laughs) Ah! Was Ah. was there an empty pedestal? Done! Uh, Mindy? Yeah? Mindy, this is nine-year-old Zlobs. Um. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm really out of it. It's, um, I have something I need to admit to you. Oh, well, all right. Um, I, I can't go with you to the Boston Public Library. What, what do you mean? Why not? I received a lifelong permanent ban for gross, fraudulent blucket use. I've been cheating on my, my blukets. Slobs. Ever since I started What do you reading. mean? How have you been cheating? I I know I've I've known a guy I've been leveraging out one of my family and my Slobs. connections. I'm sorry. I just wanted pizza. I couldn't help myself. I just I needed it. I needed it. Okay, look. I Don't make a big deal out of this, okay? I am a platinum member of the library. Oh, so you're going to help me out. I can help you out just this once because we have a school project, but you need a disguise. Okay. I'll wear a hat. Cut to uh, what? One week later. Mindy, Mindy, Mindy. This is, this is nine, (laughs) nine year old slobs. Okay. Um, Why do you always introduce yourself with your age? (laughs) I only do that when I'm really upset, when I messed up. That's understandable. Um, what, what do you need? You know how we, we gave me that hat 
to get into the library. Yeah. Hat, hat slobs get banned for life for gross, fraudulent use of Blookit. You called your you called your library alternate identity hat slobs. Yeah. And then you also got banned for life. Yes. I need you to help me, please. I need more pizza. Love. This I is need the pizza. last time, and I mean it. Okay, one week later. We Mindy, need another disguise. Mindy, Mindy, yes. this is nine-year-old slobs. I know who it is. 